All right, we are live. Hello, FinTech super fans. Welcome to another edition of the Currency Cloud super, uh, superhero, Spotlight Superhero Series. Uh, I have today Killian Brackey, the Chief Technology Officer of Sezzle. How are you, Killian? Good, Scott. Happy to be here. I know, happy to have you on. Uh, so for those who don't know, why don't you give us a little background about yourself and, and how you got involved in Sezzle? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I kind of been a lifelong technologist. I got really into like tearing things apart when I was a kid um, in, in middle school, writing code all through high school, and was uh, studying computer science and economics in college and working on some open source software development. When I actually got hired at Sezzle as a software engineering intern uh, to help build the product and uh, product out for our original product and help the team pivot the product into our current buy now, pay later. Uh, product model and uh, really kind of grew through the ranks and helped grow the team and the product out from there. So definitely been a very exciting journey here for uh, for me and the team at Sezzle. Yeah, your, your career kind of tracks not only with Sezzle, but with the, the buy now, pay later industry itself. So it's interesting that you're something of a buy now, pay later prodigy in the industry. Uh, so happy to have you on. Um, great. So for those who don't understand what Sezzle is and, and what they do, why don't you give us a little background? Uh, we know that you're a buy now, pay later startup, um, but there are a number of these and it's a very hot segment within FinTech. So what is it about Sezzle that differentiates itself um, from the other buy now, pay later companies in the industry? Yeah, so ultimately, you know, we're a buy now, pay later solution that is a mission to financially empower the next generation by offering, you know, what we really view as being one of the most consumer friendly digital payment solutions out there. Um, so ultimately what it does is allows customers to buy what they want and pay in four interest-free installment payments over the course of six weeks. And, um, and, and ultimately we're financing this and, and it's being paid for and financed by merchants that are paying a, a higher processing rate than maybe they're paying for standard payments uh, for this product, which allows us to offer this interest-free and fee-free to the consumers. So uh, that allows us to really help people that may not already have access to a spending power or credit limit with a traditional financial product and uh, really helps us open up uh, spending power to people that, um, you know, for us are what we call, you know, our credit skeptics as kind of our core, one of our user demographics and, and people that uh, may know the credit products or may have one, but um, have a tendency not to use one or to apply for one, given that they don't fully understand how they work or um, how they can get themselves into potential um, tech uh, or, you know, rather debt that uh, could potentially lead to a spiral for them. Right, so your product services both retail merchants that are looking to drive more revenue uh, by allowing buyers that might may or not have purchased that TV if they have to pay one lump sum to break out those payments and they can you know earn that make that purchase over time. Uh, so you're able to drive more revenue for the the retailer and then for the the purchaser of that item, it allows them to better manage their expenses over time. So it sounds like you're 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 offering two different services to do two different uh, sets of clients. You have the merchants on one hand and the individuals on the other. How is it that you're able to balance those two objectives uh, when you're both building product and when you're marketing um, in order to best serve? And, and how do you guys uh, motivate either side of the transaction to, to become involved in Sezzle? Yeah, so you know, I, I think you've pointed out kind of a key part of, of what we do as a team is, is that we make sure that we're offered as a payment option at as many retailers as possible, because given that it's, it is something that the retailers are paying a, a higher processing rate for, that's, that's the one thing that really enables us for the other side of our product, which is our customers. And so you know, today we're live with over 34,000 retailers, uh, primarily online through a lot of our you know, integrations, either our open API integrations or our direct integrations with various e-commerce platforms out there. But, you know, what's really exciting is we continue to grow and particularly coming out of COVID as a number of in-store restrictions are lifting and people are looking to get back into physical brick and mortar stores. Really excited to be rolling out our, uh, and continue to roll out our virtual card solution, which can be pushed into Google and Apple wallets. So people can then also, you know, use those virtual cards and tap at a terminal in-store and and take our product even more omnichannel than it has been to date. Um, so those types of solutions really help us get our product out there uh, at merchants. And as you already pointed out, people are at those retailers checking out either with more than they otherwise would, or they're converting at a higher rate, which is ultimately where the incrementality comes for those retailers. And you know, on the other side of it, you know, what we need to continue to do with our customers to continue to bring those uh, metrics and continue to um, you know, drive repeat usage on our platform. You know, we've got 
2.6 million active customers on our platform. And on a weekly basis, about 85% or so of our transactions that come through our platform are repeat transactions. So a customer making another transaction. And that comes from continuing to build trust with those consumers and really creating a predictable experience, truly being that fee-free solution. Um, and uh, ultimately, that trust is where people are going to continue to grow their available spending limit with us as they exhibit positive behavior on our platform. Their spending power is going to automatically grow and increase with them. And so, um, you know, maybe on a traditional credit product, you you might request a specific line increase from your bank, and sometimes there's another credit hit there. But there's there's an explicit ask that needs to happen. And part of what we're doing is um, with consumers is we're we're saying we we think that we you know everyone has and deserves access to credit and demonstrate to us through positive behavior that we can grow this limit with you and that's going to help you on this you know, graduated path of credit and and get access to more spending power. Yeah, that, there's a lot of questions I have off of that. Uh, that's great. So the first question I have is you mentioned that you're launching a virtual card and a POS uh, product and that people can use in uh, you know in person when they go to retail. It's interesting. I know that. Buy Now Pay Later has exploded, especially during COVID, as e-commerce has uh, become used more widely as people are, are home making purchases. And I think it's something like uh, over one percent of all transactions that are that are taking place on the internet now are using some sort of Buy Now Pay Later service. So I guess my question to you would have been, um, you know, how are you guys going to adapt in a, a post-COVID world? Um, and and you know, I, I understand that the the POS system is, is one of those ways in doing so. Um, could you explain a little bit more about how that works and, and how someone might be able to, uh, you know, go out and, and, and use this service themselves? Yeah. So, I mean, really, ultimately what it, it requires, first and foremost, you know, where you would generally see us, your first touch point, just going back to the e-commerce example, and then I can come back to in-store. When you're out shopping online, if, you know, if you're someone that shops in e-commerce, you're starting to probably see a number of these widgets show up on product detail pages. You know, you're looking at a $100 backpack you'll see the breakdown of or for interest free installment payments of $25 with Sezzle. And that's really where a lot of that incrementality uh, comes to play for retailers. If they're not doing that advertising on their product detail pages, they're not seeing as strong of results as they would otherwise see. And so really what it starts with, even for our in-store solution, is getting messaging throughout the store uh, signage so that people can get in, download the Sezzle app, uh, apply for their account, understand what their available spending power is, and get that that card that they can push to the wallet. And that's gonna help them put that thing ultimately in their physical cart. Um, but ultimately in our app, you're getting a virtual card and that virtual card is a multi-use card so that it can be pushed to your wallet. And every time that card is tapped at an eligible trans, uh, eligible terminal, right? We're using an open loop card, but we, we are artificially kind of closing the loop of that card to work only at retailers in our network because we, we do need to uh, turn around and debit for the fees ultimately um, for those retailers. And so we're artificially closing the loop of that card, but it can be tapped, you know, multiple times. Every time those authorizations come through, we're going to break that into, you know, those equal four installments over the course of the next six weeks. Well, yeah, that sounds, that sounds uh, pretty complicated to, to build out, but um, it sounds like a really great uh, product that you've been able to launch and pretty seamless once you, once you get to use it. Um, so you also mentioned, your ability to understand how much credit you can issue to any individual. And then my favorite thing about Sezzle is that your altruistic mission of allowing people that might not have access to traditional methods of building credit to do so through your platform in a, in a cost-free manner. Um, so I guess I would be interested in understanding how is it that you guys determine how much to be able, how much credit to offer to an individual? And then how does an individual build credit through your service? Yeah, good question. I, you know, I mentioned we've got a, a mission of financially empowering the next generation. It's kind of incorporated into kind of who we are and what we do. We're also a public benefits corp and a certified B corp. And really what that means, we've got some social good built into what it is that we're trying to do. And really that starts with how we're underwriting our consumers and how we're helping them on this graduated path of credit. And so ultimately, you know, you probably hear out there that FICO and traditional credit scoring isn't kind of the end all be all, particularly for this product type. And so we're leveraging as many data sources as, as our team finds relevant to you know, set some internal controls and limits for that first time um, that a person comes through our product. 
And then we've got some ongoing gamification where, you know, as you make payments, as you exhibit positive behavior on the platform and continue to use us, that limit's going to go up with each and every one of those positive behaviors. And so within our core product, you don't necessarily see your available limit. What you're doing is you are coming through and you're applying for the checkout amount that the retailer has. And we're going to look and say, this, this meets our kind of risk threshold for you right now, or this doesn't. A product that we're really excited about that we've launched in the last year here is a product called Sezzle Up. And within Sezzle Up, what a consumer ends up being able to see is they see that available limit. So um, they're able to see what uh, their spending power is within our platform. And they're then also going to have all of their positive um, or all of their repayment behavior reported to the credit bureau as well. Um, and so that's really helping people on that graduate path of credit as well. So. All of those things really come together for, for our Sezzle Up product. Um, so we don't affect credit for our core product. We don't look at credit for our core product, but we will start reporting for all of our shoppers that are in, uh, in Sezzle Up. That's great. And then it helps drive usage of your service as well if, if they're motivated in order to, to build their credit. Um, and so what controls are in place or, or what how do you guys basically make sure that those using Sizzle Up are, it's a different experience than they would be using a different credit card, um, whether it's uh, you know different costs or different rules associated with the card. How is it that Sizzle Up is different from a typical uh, method of building credit, like using a normal credit card from a different, um, like a, a Visa, let's say? Yeah, and one of the inherent product features that, that we have and you know, a number of buy now pay later solutions out there have as well is that with a credit card, you, you can you know, make transactions up to your available limit, and it's going to be on more of a revolving basis. So you'll have a statement that and a, and a closing date of that statement for all those transactions and due dates and, and APR associated with that. With a product like ours, every transaction turns into that six-week you know, down payment um, and then three installment payments uh, over the next six weeks. And one of the things built into our product as you know, an inherent budgeting tool to really help people not get too much debt stacked up that they can't keep up with is that if you have failed to make a payment at any point in time, you can't make another order. So you can't add another installment product until you are current on all of your, your other outstanding products. And so it's really helping on that kind of budgeting side of things, ensure that people are not um, you know, taking out more than they can eventually pay off in the next six weeks. And that's one of those inherent product features that's really helping people budget and uh, really helping our shoppers not uh, stack up too much debt on the product like this. Awesome. And so what I love about Sezzle is, is you started as a buy now, pay later company, but because you guys have such talent and, and the way you guys think so creatively, you're, you're becoming much more than that. And so you're offering all these different services. Um, are there any other services beyond the virtual cards and the Sezzle Up uh, that you guys are excited about launching? And is there anything else that you guys are doing? Because I know it's so core to your mission to do the right thing. Is there anything else that you guys are, are doing from a corporate responsibility standpoint um, that you're proud of as well? Yeah, so within our, you know, our certification for B Corp and, and what we're doing there, um, you know, we're really excited for uh, some of the initiatives we're running this year. You know, we're planting a tree for every new active user that comes through our platform this year as well with the uh, partnership with Trees for the Future um, we're, we're also working on reducing our carbon footprint as a company. We're giving a full scholarship to the University of Minnesota. Um, and we're working on building a lot of financial literacy tools out through both our social media and our core pro product platforms uh, with the product we're calling Sezzle University and really helping people understand, you know, outside of our product, uh, really trying to understand how to really build their financial future. And um, we also committed to building a nonprofit fund for uh, supporting you know other cases that are aligned with our, our core mission. So we've got a lot of really exciting things we're doing from a, a social good perspective as well. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Um, and and yeah, you guys are based in, in Minnesota. I, you know, tough go for your, the Minnesota Wild and you know the Twins themselves too. I mean, geez, um, <laughs> it just you know reminded me of that. All right, great. So I guess we can kind of leave off is you guys are, are growing so rapidly and and it's really just been explosive and and i love to see it as you know as we maintain our own relationship as well it's been it's been great to see it um is there anything that you wanted to comment on 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 your growth and and whether or not you guys are expanding your team or, or anything of that nature yeah no absolutely it's it's uh been a really exciting growth story we've had uh, we found it in 2016 um and i was on the team very early on when we were a small team 
And you know, just looking at 2020, we our team uh, over doubled in size, and we had over you know 250 percent year over year revenue growth. And so, as we continue to grow, we are growing our team a fair bit. So uh, we do have you know even just on the the product engineering team over 15 roles open. So um, you know, anyone tuned in or have people that are out in the market looking, um, we're we're continuing to grow our team to continue to build uh, build on our mission and do what we're doing. So feel feel free to check us out at sezzle.com forward slash careers. Um, or reach out to edit me or anyone on the team on LinkedIn. All right, awesome. Um, so thanks a lot for joining us, Killian. Again, if you want to reach out uh, to Sezzle, if you want to just learn more about them, you want to sign up for an account, or you want to join the team, sezzle.com slash careers for those joining, sezzle.com for the, uh, the product itself, and you can also follow them on LinkedIn. Um, well, Killian, thanks a lot for joining us. It's uh, It's been really great having you on. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Happy to be here. All right.